Okay, so looks like here we have a spring problem that's uh, dealing with energy and it also has an inclined plane involved. So the idea is that you have a mass um, that's been compressed a certain distance on this inclined plane uh, with the spring. Uh, and then what happens is it's released and we're trying to find essentially how far it travels once it's released. So I, I uh, drew a quick initial and final diagram here just to get started, where in the beginning it's compressed by this distance d uh, from the equilibrium point. And then in the end, it's going to be stretched by a distance L minus D, where L is the total distance that it travels. So it goes D to the equilibrium point, and then it goes L minus D past that. That's why this quantity is L minus D. And I'm actually going to draw a quick, uh, a quick triangle, basically. So I'm going to draw a third triangle here, and that's going to help us figure out the change in height, because that's something that we need for energy. So if I draw this triangle here, because what's important to us when we're considering energy is the change in height or the gravitational potential energy. So we have a distance L that it's traveled up and we're trying to find the change in height or the uh, distance H right here. Uh, so what we can actually do to solve this is we can uh, understand this is the right triangle and set up sine theta equals h over l because sine is opposite over hypotenuse and then we get that h equals l sine theta so that's going to be the change in potential energy from the initial to the final situation and now we basically have everything we need to set up an energy equation so let's think about what components we have at the beginning we have uh, we have no gravitational potential energy because we're considering the uh, we're considering the lowest point to be uh, we're considering the lowest point to be zero gravitational potential energy, but we do have spring energy, so we're going to write that as U.S. initial for now, and that gets converted to uh, U uh, U.S. final because it's actually stretched past its equilibrium point at the end, so we have to account for how much it's stretched uh, using spring energy. Then we also have uh, a new gravitational potential energy, uh, MGH, with this H that we just calculated. Then finally, we have the work done by friction, because there actually is friction in this problem. They do give us this mu k value. So we have a work done by friction, and the reason we added it on the right side rather than the left is because it's doing negative work. It's taking energy away from the system, which is why we put it on the right. If it was adding energy to the system, we would add it on the left. So now we can start to evaluate what we had. So initially, it was compressed by a distance d, and we know spring energy is 1 half kd squared. So that's our initial spring energy, and that's equal to... The final spring energy, now it's uh, stretched by L minus D. So then we have 1 half times K times L minus D squared, because that's the distance that it's stretched. Then our final gravitational potential energy is going to be MGL sine theta, uh, because it's MGH, and in this case our H is L sine theta. Then our work done by friction is just going to be uh, the frictional force times L, and uh, in order to calculate the frictional force, uh, we need to know the normal force. So if we draw a quick free body diagram of the block on the plane, uh, the forces we have are mg, then we have a normal force perpendicular to the plane, then we have a friction force coming from that normal force that's going to be down the plane because it's actually moving up the plane. Um, and then we, we also have like a spring force pushing it this way. So. And uh, in the second part, it'll be pulling it the other way, but the spring force doesn't matter too much to us right now. We want to find this normal force and then use it to find the frictional force. So what we can do is we can split this mg into components, uh, one in the direction of normal force, one in the direction of friction. So this is going to be our y and our x. And the idea is that the normal force and the mgy actually cancel out. So n, and this is our theta here because it's the smaller angle. So n equals mgy. And in this case, y is adjacent to our theta. So n equals mg cos theta, which means that the frictional force just equals mu times n or mu mg cos theta.
So now let's plug that in. So mu mg uh, cos theta. And then that whole thing is multiplied by L because L is the distance that it's compressed. Also notice that I'm solving in all variables because uh, it's cleaner to not have to deal with real numbers and then uh, you wanna plug them in at the end. Uh, but in this video, I'll just leave it with a variable solution since that should be enough. So the first thing we can do, we can multiply everything by two and then we can uh, expand out our L minus D squared. So when we do that, we get uh, kd squared equals k times uh, l squared minus 2ld plus d squared. Uh, and then we have, we're multiplying everything by 2. So plus 2 mgl sine theta plus 2 mu mg uh, cos theta times l. And now our kd squared is going to cancel with uh, this kd squared. So now all we have left is zero equals, and we can factor an L out of our equation now because everything uh, has an L term in it. L times kl minus 2kd. So I was just uh, expanding out that k expression. 2kd uh, then plus uh, 2mg. Uh, sine theta, because we're factoring out an L, plus 2 mu mg cos theta. Perfect. And then we see that L equals 0 is one of our solutions, but we don't really uh, care about that solution. What we do care about is uh, that this part equals 0. So if we put the KL term on one side, the rest of the non-L terms on the other side, we get that KL equals uh, two, uh, 2KD minus 2, and I'll factor this out. Or actually, I'll factor 2 out of the whole. Actually, I'll leave it like this. So 2 times, we can factor an MG, and then we get sine theta uh, plus mu cos theta. Let me see if I can fit that. Yes, I can. So then uh, we can just divide by K. So that would be 2d minus uh, 2mg over k times uh, sine theta plus mu cos theta. And that's going to be our final answer here for L. And we can just plug in uh, the values we have. So mu, d, m, everything. And we should be able to solve for L. So this is uh, pretty representative of like energy problems, one of the harder ones. And uh, hope this helps.